So you want to be able to launch your fighters from your hangar bays, have them go out and battle and then return once the battle's over. Or perhaps you want them to return when the batteries are low or their ammunition is running low so they can resupply and then go back out and fight. Well in today's video that's what we're going to be showing you how to do. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you these launch, I'm going to show you how we've set everything up and then I'm going to hold your hand and configure a fighter at the end. There is one big disclaimer that I've learned while setting these up and really I should have set them up all over again. Do not use a grid with subgrids attached to it. The AI gets very, very confused and it just stops working at some points. It also doesn't like having collision avoidance on when the subgrids attach to that grid. So save yourself the bother and the hassle and don't attach any subgrids to one that you plan on having the AI control. Right, let's get ourselves stuck into the setup. So when the timer block activates on the main ship with our single button press, it activates our takeoff record. That works in combination with the takeoff and a landing movement button that launches it out of the hangar bay. Once it's out of the hangar bay, it has a switch that activates our combat movement and combat mode blocks over there. It then ventures towards the target with a timer block ticking down on two minutes. Of course it could be longer if you wanted it to, but I've just got two minutes for this demonstration. So that'll allow it to circle, battle for two minutes and then return. We've also got a low ammunition button. So if this event handler runs low on ammunition, it will trigger our RTB switch early. So it's a really straightforward system this, there's not much to go wrong and the timer block with the RTB sequence will recall it back, um, you know, even if there is a problem with the other sequences. So let's begin. We'll switch over to our singular launch sequence and we'll get a nice angle here. And there we go. So we've got all four of our fighters launching. There's going to be quite a few issues in this video but most of them are down to me using grids with subgrids attached to them. So save yourself the hassle and don't have yourself any subgrids attached to them. So wings have now expanded. Fighters are going in for the attack. So the hit and run sequence has begun. The ships are attacking, breaking off and attacking once again. The event handler is in place checking if they've got enough ammunition to continue the attack. If they suddenly run out of ammunition it'll automatically return them back to the carrier. Now it wouldn't be a real test this and a bit of a demonstration without for instance us moving the carrier around. So let's get our carrier and let's move it over here because that's what's going to be happening in a battle. The carrier isn't going to sit still. We're going to be moving, we're going to be engaging. We're going to have to move, you know, probably evade other ships trying to jump in on the carrier from behind. So you can see the fighters are going in, launching strike after strike. There we go, striking from multiple angles. The addition of them extra grids on the side is making it harder for them AI grids to maneuver. But they are just about doing it, avoiding... I said avoiding collision, you don't collide now, I would have said... Oh, they've all... <laughs> I said avoiding collision. That is because we've been silly and used subgrids. We're not going to use subgrids on any more AI projects from now on. We've learned our lesson the hard way. And what is our ship doing over there, spinning around? There we go. We had a, we had a little bit of an issue there. We've had a big issue. But it's not, it's not unrealistic. Fighters and other ships are going to get damaged during these battles. And that's probably one of the reasons you perhaps don't want a damaged fighter coming back aboard with a, a vulnerable hydrogen tank. So the fighters are coming back to their positions and they are beginning their landing sequence. Some are coming in better condition than other. So these will begin the sequence. Once they get to this docking side, they should rotate and level off. I'm hoping everything's going to work and systems haven't been destroyed on the inside. Yeah, it's, look, it's looking semi-good so far. That's one in. Yes, one successful in. We've got second one going in here. Success on that one. Success on that one. Oh no, this is not going well. This one looks like it's it's became damaged beyond repair. And this is another reason perhaps why you don't want an AI one trying to force itself back in when it's become damaged. Oh, it's, it's managing to do it though. Is it going to be able to lock itself down? It's struggling the AI. It's battling with the controls, but it has done it. So there we go. We even managed to get a damaged fighter back to landing so let's go over the sequence and I'll show you how to set this up for yourself. Now this is where the guide is going to start. I'm going to hold your hand through the process and take you step by step through it. 
So first off, I've added three blocks. These are all directional blocks, and we have the AI movement, and we've got two AI recorders. This AI recorder is going to be for the takeoff sequence. This one is going to be for the landing. Now, before we go any further, jump yourself into the cockpit, go over to your AI blocks, make sure your flight move is off so we can still maneuver our ship, and make sure our recorders our connected up to this beacon or the beacon that is the carrier that is very very important then go back make sure your collision avoidance is off so it will navigate in here without having any issues now go into your g menu drag our recorders so we've got takeoff down here add waypoint and we've got landing add waypoint so we can control the ship now and add waypoints manually so the first thing we want to do is make sure the ship's nice and level and I like to do this by activating our connector, let the connector stabilise it and once it's stabilised we can then start taking some recordings. So we're going to take one recording there, we're going to shoot up into the air ever so little and then activate in number two. We're going to then shoot out of the hangar, get enough clearance like so and then activate number three. So there we go, hold on. So we've got number zero, number one, number two. Okay, that's perfect. Then we need to do it in reverse sequence. So number three. Okay, bring it over the connector. And then we'll activate our number three again. We're trying to make this as similar to the takeoff procedure as possible. So it looks nice and smooth. And then bring yourself down over the connector. And there we go. Now we can do a quick little bit of wiring on these as well while we're at it. So if we bring our AI blocks and we go with the landing, at that final stage we want it to lock up. So we can set up an action and we can add it to lock, like so. And at the beginning stage of the takeoff we want this to unlock. And the best way I've found to unlock one of these is just simply turn it off. But by doing so we'll have to turn it back on in one of the other sequences. Okay, so on takeoff at waypoint 2, we need to activate a timer block to switch it into combat mode. But before we do that, let's just make sure our AI blocks are working. So AI behavior on, let's play the takeoff. Beautiful, nice smooth takeoff. We've moved to the outer angle. Okay, and let's try our AI landing. Let's make sure it's nice and smooth. The smoother we get these, the easier it will be. It does take time to set up nice and smooth and that should come in and then it would lock in place but we've not activated a timer to switch it back over okay perfect that's just what we want there now with them doing it is time for our next stage adding the combat ai so in this stage we're adding the combat ai and to do so on that waypoint once we've left the hangar we need a switch that turns off this ai and activates this one the difference between that one and this one is that collision is going to be on so you could just switch the collision on that but you'd then have to remember to switch it back off on that i think it's more straightforward if you just use a separate block especially for this tutorial anyhow so let's configure that now so once that's been switched on we also need to switch on our combat ai and then it can go out and do some hunting so let's have a look at this timer block so going into here we've got ourselves our nice timer block combat switch it's set up to 0.1 of a second and then we can start switching things around so this is our landing and takeoff movement so we can just turn ai behavior off we can turn our combat ai behavior on and then we can have our offensive block on and that is all we really need to do it's going to start working right from that point and hunting down enemy grids or whatever's in the area but we do need to begin a return to base sequence so we'll add that in now so let's add in the return to base sequence we're going to add another timer and we're also going to add an event handler the event handler is going to trigger the rtb sequence that's going to be on that timer block if the ammunition gets below a certain point so let's configure that first so go to our event controller we've got our event controller cargo field we're going to change that to equal to or less than we're going to set that to zero and then we're going to add both our auto cannons to that block so when them auto cannons run out of ammunition it will then trigger a selected action and the selected action is for our timer block to start up instantly so let's bring that up it's timer block four because we've not named it we should always name things and that is on trigger now so that will bypass that timer block on the rtb so let's just quickly name that up rtb 
and then we want this RTB, we'll, we'll leave it set to 20 seconds just for testing so we can see if everything's working up. And the setup actions, the RTB sequence is going to turn off that current AI movement that is on. So AI, AI behavior off. It's going to turn on our landing behavior. It's going to turn off our combat behavior. And then it's going to turn on our landing recorder. So it will head to the waypoints that we've recorded earlier. And that should be everything. Oh, there is one more thing. Remember, we turned off our connector at the start. So we need to turn on our connector at this point again so it can then land. So there's a few more bits that we need to string up together. But for the most part, we've got all the systems now in place. But they're all separate. They're not triggering each other. So we've got the landing that doesn't connect up properly with the combat. That's what we need to do next. And then we've got the combat that doesn't connect up to the return to base function. So let's try and connect everything up together. And the best way I found of doing this is work our way through it. So first off, our AI blocks are going to be on. Great, our takeoff sequence is going to begin. So our takeoff sequence, our block gets toggled off. So at waypoint two, that's when we need to activate that switch. So let's work our way through that. So timer, combat switch we're looking for. And that is going to start the combat switch. So now the combat switch has been activated. Combat is happening. But we also need to make sure the RTB sequence has begun as well. So let's check our timer block and our combat switch. So go inside here. And you can see that our other timer block is not on there just yet. So we need to activate our timer RTB sequence on start. So after 20 seconds in this case, it will then return to base after being in, in combat mode for 20 seconds. And this is just a bit of a fallback system in case everything else fails. You know your grids are coming back to you. Um, there we go. So that's an activated the RTB system. The RTB system is very happy. And that is returning after 20 seconds. Let's make sure that's done. Okay, and it should return back to base. There is only one more thing that is worth looking at. And that is the AI recorder. And just to make sure that the takeoff and landing sequences are happy. Yep. And we could give this system a bit of a, a whirl, really. Okay, AI behavior is on. We have takeoff. And let's just let the system play out. Okay. A little collision there. Let's have a look. So as we get to this stage, let's see if it activates our combat AI. Right, combat AI is activated. Great. We've only got 20 seconds on this combat AI, though, this time. So it might be able to get a few shots off. We'll see. Okay, it doesn't look like it's doing it. looks like it's just trying to maneuver away from it. Okay, probably because of the subgrids are confusing things. And there we have the switch back to our landing sequence. The AI is going, hold, hold the phone a second. I need to work out how to get back there. <laughs> so it's calculating our way back to that ship right now. Come on, you can do it. I didn't mess up a sequence, did I? Let's see if it's trying to play that return. Okay, so it's trying to play. No, it's idle. So we've missed off a sequence somewhere. Let's have a look. It must be in the sequence where it's trying to trigger its return. So let's check our timer block and our RTB sequence. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, AI behavior on no we need to press play we've turned it on instead so our landing let's just press play on that next time and that should bring it back into position everything else is kind of looking good oh this is not looking good it's looking a bit iffy here AI oh you've done it you've managed to do it uh, and we got a lock at the end there okay so Let's try that out one more time with our little changes. It's going to take you a few times to master this and work out exactly what's going wrong in some sections. So let's start our takeoff sequence. Let's play it. Okay, we are taking off. Combat mode should be activating. Yes, combat mode is activating. Great. It's, in, it's shooting at the target. The timer block is counting down. Let's check that timer block, see it running. This is the RTB, RTB sequence. Nine seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three. This time we're expecting it to return back to the carrier rather than just getting stuck. Okay. Yes. So we've done it. 
there's the complete sequence. And of course, you can extend that sequence of combat in the middle so you can have some great fighting. I really hope this has helped you master, well, not, I wouldn't say master, but you've got one step closer to be able to launch your hangers, open them up, fire your carriers, you know, do, do hanger and fighter stuff. It's lovely. There we go. As it just ambiently returns back to its nesting point aboard the carrier. Anyway, if you liked any of the grids in this video, there is a link down to them in the description. I'm afraid they've not got AI on because I've just had a look at them from the workshop and been testing fitting your AI to pretty much everything to see how it would work. So check the link out in the description below. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and let me know what you'd like to see on a tutorial next.